When I first started to film an Apica overview video, I thought I was going to include write testing with uh, different pens and inks in the original video. But what ended up happening was the video was way longer than I thought it would be. I didn't want to cut anything out because I wanted to get as many details in the video as possible. So I decided to break it out and I'm gonna make a separate one right now just on the write testing and paper quality of the Apica notebooks. So here it is. Now I deal primarily with fountain pens, so that's really what I'm gonna stick to today. There are, you know, uh, bowl pens and roller balls and pencils and stuff that all work fine on this. Uh, but fountain pens really kind of put the stress on the paper, uh, especially the ink resistance, because it's a liquid ink. Um, the, the paper is a little bit different in the basic Apica notebook versus the CD. So I'm gonna start with the basic. Um, well, actually, let me start with the paper color because there is a noticeable difference in the paper color if you hold them side by side. The basic is definitely has more of a gray color to it than the CD does. Uh, I wanted to compare it to um, some Clairefontaine paper that I have, which you can see is a brighter, crisper white color, whereas these have almost a little bit of an off-white color to them. This one's a little bit gray, green. This one is more of just an off-white cream. Uh, to give you an idea of how off-white I have some, uh, this is a Rhodia premium tablet here. Uh, the Rhodia paper definitely has a strong yellow color to it. Okay, so it's definitely not in that vein. But let me see how many papers I can get in here at once. Okay. Um, I also have Luigi Storm. That is an off-white as well. That's got a little bit of a yellowish color to it, not as strong as the Rhodia, uh, but the Apica is not as yellow as Leuchtturm. Uh, and then to top it all off, I've got Moleskin as well. That one has kind of a yellowish tinge too, um, a little bit more of a yellow, a little bit of green to it, more so than the Leuchtturm. Uh, but the Apica is not anywhere near as yellow as any of these other off-white papers. Uh, and seeing them all together like this, you can definitely tell how the basic seems a little gray compared to the rest. So interesting stuff. Everybody's got a different version of what off-white means, uh, but I don't know technically what you would want to call the Apica stuff. I would consider it to be uh, kind of off-white, mainly just because I'm used to the Clairefontaine and you know the uh, Rhodia um, tablets here. I showed you the off-white Rhodia, but there's there's a regular Rhodia pad, the white. So that to me is white. Uh, anything less than that's kind of off-white. But anyway, um, so the paper is a little bit different, not just the color, but the performance. Okay, so I had the basic notebook, the 3A5. Um, I did a little bit of testing in it. I wanted to see what the dry time was like, see how it held up to some various inks that I've used. I have um, some Eroshizuku Ama Iro in my Pilot Custom A23 with a medium nib. Um, I have Red Dragon, Diamond Red Dragon in a Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib. I have Noodler's 54th in a Pilot Custom 74 with a medium nib. I have Noodler's Apache Sunset in a Pelican M200 Italic. And then I have Alami Vista with Noodler's Black. I felt that that gave me a pretty good variety to show how these inks and pens would perform. Uh, so I'll start off here. The Ama Iro has a little bit longer dry time. I did a review of that with Rhodia and it was upwards of the 25, 30 seconds. So that didn't alarm me too much. Most of the Eroshizukas dry pretty fast. This one is one of the longer ones. Um, the Red Dragon typically is a very long dry time. It's a very saturated ink. Wasn't too surprised to see that go a while. Uh, 54th Massachusetts. This one um, dried for the most part at around 15 seconds, um, but it seemed like because of the smoothness or whatever coating they use on this paper, it would kind of reach a point to where it would dry, and then I'm more or less just smearing off kind of a top coat. Because uh, as you're seeing here, the difference between the 15, 20, 25, and 30 is not really anything significant. It's almost like the paper wouldn't, or the ink wouldn't absorb all the way into the paper, at least within 30 seconds. Maybe over a longer period of time it would, uh, but that's just what I experienced there. Apache Sunset, one of the best shading inks that I know. 
Um, performed pretty well. The dry time was uh, a little bit long, but this is a really wet ink. I'm not too surprised. Um, the shading on this one, uh, usually I can tell how ink resistant a paper is, how crisp the ink will appear uh, by the shading of Apache Sunset. And that's why I used it in the italic nib as well. Um, it did pretty well. I have seen better shading uh, on other papers. So this particular paper is not, the, you know, it doesn't make the ink as crisp as I've seen on some others. It's definitely better than things like uh, moleskin and other, other inks or other papers I've used that are just outright absorbents. Um, but it's not quite as good as Rodeo's Clair and Clairefontaine. Uh, and then last, Noodler's Black uh, did very well. Um, again, it did the same kind of thing like with the 54th Massachusetts, not as bad, but it reached a point around 15 seconds where it just kind of would smear a little bit, and it just kind of kept doing that. So I think that's probably a combination of the property of the ink as well as the paper. The paper itself is very smooth. Uh, I found that this is very smooth, uh, almost comparable to Rhodia, maybe just a notch under Rhodia for this basic paper. Um, I'm not super in love with it. It did perform well. I think um, you may need to adjust some of your nib and ink combinations with this paper to go a little bit on the drier side. If you go throw in really wet italics and flex nibs with really wet ink that has a long dry time, you're probably not going to be super thrilled with how it does on this paper, but um, even still, it held up well. It's, it didn't bleed through onto the back. Um, it did not uh, feather really at all. So in that respect, it does hold up really well. It's just got a long dry time, that's all. It seems to be very, very ink resistant paper. Then I just used a rollerball and a pencil. I tried to use those as little as possible, but very smooth. Um, felt good with both of those as well. Um, there's the back of Noodler's Black. So it did hold up really well to the inks. Um, even the, you know, the 54th Massachusetts and Apache Sunset, those were in, in fairly wet pens. Um, I started to get just the tiniest bit of bleed through, just barely on a wet part uh, there with Noodler's Massachusetts, uh, 54th Massachusetts, but it's really insignificant. So you can definitely write on both sides of this very comfortably, okay? Uh, but I did like this paper better. I do like the CD paper. The, it's a little bit wider, but it did hold up a little bit better, I found. Now this one, Drew, actually kind of helped me out. Drew's my shipping manager, does a lot of our drawings and stuff. Um, loves to draw. Just helped me out because I was, you know, wanting to get a second opinion about what the paper was like. Uh, so he played around with it, used a whole bunch of inks, did some little doodles and stuff. So he's got like things like Heart of Darkness, uh, North African Violet, Matador, Noodler's Turquoise, Liberty's Elysium, Green Cactus Eel, L. Lawrence, Bay State Blue, 41 Brown, Dimey Majestic Blue. Really just kind of to get in the full gamut. He likes to use really wet stuff. He loves drawing with his flex pen. The Ahab is his pen of choice. Um, so he really likes to kind of push the limits. Um, and it held up really well. The, the only inks that really kind of started to um, reach past the point of, of you know, satisfaction, I guess, uh, would be the Noodler's Green Cactus Eel, super, super wet ink, used it in a really wet italic. Started to get a little bit of spread on there. Not really any feathering, um, just a little bit of spreading, so it kind of spread out from the line. It's really not too bad, though. I've seen a whole lot worse. Bay State Blue and a flex pen, that is like the... That is the combination that we use to try to just obliterate paper. Um, and it held up reasonably well. I definitely got some spread there. Um, and 41 Brown in an italic as well got a little bit of spread. Not anything too crazy. Everything else held up okay, though. Um, showing the back here, some of these splotches are actually, um, you know, just imprints because the, the ink wasn't dry when Drew closed the book. So um, some of this is actually from the ink over here. But there is a little bit of bleed through uh, that you can see here from the green cactus eel that Drew wrote over here. Um, and then the Bay State Blue definitely bled through there um, in that flex pen. 41 Brown started to a little bit as well. Um, he wrote again more like just normal writing um, with each of those pens, um, and it definitely fares better than it did when he was kind of stress testing with the drawing and stuff. Um, so I would say you could probably use about 90 or 95 percent of your inks with a very good success on this paper. Drew did a little fun drawing there. Um, did get a little bit of bleeding with the base state and the flex. Uh, again, not too terribly surprising. That's, that's our torture ink and pen combination there. Um, some of this other stuff you see here was just copied over from the other page. So Drew just did a couple of fun drawings. Um, you know, definitely dumped some uh, base date over there, which, you know, definitely bled through to the back. Not surprising. But all in all, you know, honestly, held up pretty darn well considering, 
you know, it's 80 gram paper. It's not the thickest stuff you'll ever see, but it did hold up reasonably well. Maybe just a, maybe just a notch below Rhodia, but it's really pretty darn close to it. Um, I did some writing of my own with this, with uh, Pilot Oro Shizuku, Amairo, Red Dragon, 54th Massachusetts Apache Sunset Lummy Black. Again, same pen combinations that I used on the basic notebook. And I did find that the dry time was uh, noticeably faster with this, uh, the CD paper, than it was um, on the basic paper. I can kind of show you a side by side, but the basic, I didn't have any ink that dried within my 30 second time frame. Uh, but the CD paper, I definitely did. Um, you know, the Ama Eero was pretty much dead on to what I experienced when I used it on Rhodia paper. Uh, Red Dragon, not quite in the 30 seconds, but it wasn't as wet as it was on the basic. 54th Massachusetts was really strange, okay? It really kind of soaked in. It spread quite a bit. Um, didn't feather, really. It just spread and really kind of got into the paper, but it dried crazy fast. I mean, on this paper, it didn't dry for 30 seconds. This one, it was dry. It smeared a little bit at the 10 seconds, I think, because I, I pushed a little harder on the 10 than I did on the 5, maybe. Uh, but it was completely dry, every, you know, for the rest of it. So 54th really kind of threw me for a loop there. But... You know, that just goes to show that different paper and inks can react differently. Um, Apache Sunset, I got more shading, more crispness to it uh, on this paper than I did here. Um, fared well on both. It did actually dry for the most part before 30 seconds, so that was cool. Uh, and then the Noodler's Black uh, held up better, did not smear after 15 seconds. So that was good. So I would say if the dry time and the paper quality crispness of the ink is the most important factor for you, you're probably going to like the CD paper a little bit better. And then just to show you the back here, um, that 54th, for whatever reason, soaked in more, didn't quite bleed through, but I can tell, I can tell that it wants to some kind of bad. So I bet if I use a wetter pen, I could get it to bleed through. But everything else held up really well. And this paper is very smooth, very much akin to Rhodia. So I'm a big fan uh, of this paper. Use a roll bar on pencil and it was fine, whatever. Use a fountain pen. Um, and then I just did some uh, kind of scratchings here on the back of both papers. Um, so what I was trying to do was just, you know, go back and forth and write like that and then do some cross hatches to try to get it to bleed through, really put down a lot of ink and see how it turned out. Um, and actually, they both fared really well um, with, with both inks. I got a tiniest bit of bleed through on the back here with Noodler's Black in the fine on the CD paper, but not on the other one. So um, both of them held pretty well with that little test. I don't know what that really tells you, but... That's, uh, that's what I did anyway. So I was uh, very reasonably pleased with how this performed, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions about the way that Apica paper performs, just hit me up in the comments or Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and I will be happy to help you out. Thanks for spending time with me today, and right on.